Hey guys, the Strong Boys 19 here. It's time for another update video, and yeah, I know. Look at me. I'm I am a I'm a messy hairdo guy for this video because I had been relaxing and um, feeling lazy after a hard hard couple of days work of uh, practicing and gigging, but. Uh, but that's the way it is. It's it's not really an excuse because I am a, a musician besides a YouTuber. But uh, I am really focusing on what I have to do uh, that I love doing to uh, uh, be surrounded with uh, music that I love to uh, to play and uh, you know to work on. So, anyways, I have gone back to Sawfish Records and. Uh, it has been absolutely ages since I have been there. Uh, more than, say, more than half a year ago. So that's just uh, crazy. But I am really glad to uh, revisit uh, that uh, Birmingham uh, record shop. So anyways, let's get on with the update. I have two CDs and uh, the other ones are... Uh, Records that I am really looking forward to show you. So the first CD is On the Corner by Miles Davis. This is one of my favourite Miles Davis albums. It took me some time to really appreciate it. But um, this is, I think, uh, one of these records that you need to keep listening to over and over until you understand and um, get into what's going on properly. I still love the cover art, and uh, I do have the Music on Vinyl remaster, and um, this album is just fantastic. And the other CD is John Coltrane's Ascension. This is one of my favourite albums of all time now, because I think Ascension is uh, one of these records that is so out there. It is chaotic, it is noisy, loud, and um, this is a masterpiece of free jazz in my eyes. And this CD contains uh, the two different takes of this album, which I really like on the uh, Impulse remastered uh, series. So I love John Coltrane, as you already know. So this is one of my favourite jazz albums of all time. Now onto the records. This first one, I was really, really thrilled to have this album, and I just couldn't believe it. I already have it on vinyl, but it's a later pressing on the NEMS label. This is an original Vertigo Swirl pressing of Black Sabbath's Volume 4. This album is a classic in my opinion and I will surpass this pretty much more than uh, the other fantastic albums from this band like The Debut and Master of Reality and Sabotage 13 but uh, this album sounds really really great on the original vinyl Con does contain uh, the big um, brief booklet of pictures of the band and uh, I'll show you the original Vertigo Swirl and uh, here's the other side so I was very very surprised that I do have an original uh, Vertigo pressing of um, one of Black Sabbath's albums and uh, the condition of this is, I would say, it's in brilliant shape. And the record plays like a dream. No problems at all. So that is uh, volume four, which is pretty much my third favourite Sabbath album. Paranoid's my favourite. Heaven and Hell is my second. And uh, volume four is my third favourite. So that's that one. The next one, I already have this album, uh, which was uh, the 1971 uh, re-release of this um, classic, essential double album masterpiece. 
but the surface noise was just unbearable. So I decided to purchase uh, the same album, but on the uh, Music on Vinyl remaster from 2011 of Soft Machine 3rd. This is one of my most favourite double albums of all time period. Top 10. And I love Soft Machine. They're just one of my favourite UK bands of all time. And uh, the sound of this remaster is just as beautiful as ever. Slightly All the Time is my favourite Soft Machine track. And uh, the other three tracks are just as great. Facelift, um, Moon in June, and uh, the epic closer, Out Bloody Rageous. But Slightly All the Time for me is uh, one of the top ten greatest instrumentals of all time. It's smooth, it's laid back, it's adventurous, it is... Um, just an outstanding piece of music in my opinion. So that is Soft Machine with third. The Rolling Stones, get your yayas out. This is not an original. It's I think the 12th UK pressing from 1970 on the Decca label. And I really do like having records from this label even though that some of these early pressings from uh, Decca can be um, pricey at times. But um, this live album is brilliant. Um, this has, I think, some of the best lead guitar work from Mick Taylor, especially on uh, Stray Cat Blues and Sympathy for the Devil, Midnight Rambler. And uh, this album is brilliant awesome live album now this is a uh, a double album remaster uh, the first record is the the original uh, uh, release and the second record is uh, the same tracks but uh, mixed differently uh, with alternate vocals this is the Stooges self-titled debut album and, uh, you know, as I said, the first record is the original album and the other one is the uh, different uh, takes, uh, different um, versions, mixes type of record. This is on the Electra Records label and uh, I really do like this record label a lot. And uh, I was introduced to this label because of The Doors. And I remember that uh, they were a very big name through the Electra Records label. This debut is really good, but Funhouse is the best Stooges album, in my opinion. So I need to buy Raw Power. And uh, I don't think I'm going to bother with the other two releases after um, Raw Power, because I've heard that they are um, uh, not as strong or as poor. I've heard that the, the weirdness is like known as their weakest or worst, but uh, the Stooges, I still think they're one of the most funnest and rawest bands in rock music. John Coltrane and Alice Coltrane, Cosmic Music. This is a record I did not expect to see at all, because the original copies of this can go for a lot of money. But this is the 2017 um, remaster. And uh, this is possibly the most surprising uh, Coltrane record that I have ever bought. Because, you know, as I said about the original pressings of this, uh, they can be, you know, they can be selling for a crazy amount of money. But uh, this is a really, really good um Coltrane release and uh I'm just very glad to have it anyways and uh speaking of um Coltrane here is uh, Alice Coltrane with one of her albums called Journey in uh, Sanchin Dananda 
I might have butchered the, that last word. Uh, featuring Barrow Sanders. And I do like Barrow Sanders playing a lot on here as well. Uh, this is an unofficial pressing on the Impulse label. Gayfold looks like this. And I really do like these uh, Jazz Gatefold releases that contain uh, pictures of the musicians and um, the information and quotes behind these records. I just find them interesting and uh, I am looking forward to collect the other records from Alice and uh, I just never knew that Alice Coltrane had made music around the same time as um, John Coltrane so yeah I'll have to uh, give her a, a lot of um, a lot of spins from her records anyway John Coltrane once again this is ballads this is the 1995 um, Impulse remaster. I think this is one of his best. Not many Coltrane fans talked about this album. Not like uh, the other ones, like My Favorite Things to A Love Supreme, Ascension, and um, Blue Train. Uh, but I think this is a very smooth, gentle sounding uh, album that I really enjoy. It's on the Impulse label, as I said, and um, it's not really a long album, it's just half an hour, but uh, stop doing that, please. <laughs> Sorry about that, um, but it's got some very smooth playing from Coltrane and the other musicians, uh, McCoy Tyner. Jimmy Garrison and Elvin Jones. I really like Elvin Jones' drumming a lot. Uh, they worked really well on this album as well. And I am going to purchase some more of Coltrane's stuff because, because he has released a lot of records like Miles Davis. And speaking of Miles Davis, once again, this is Miles Davis of the Fillmore. Now I've got to say, I've got to be honest. I was a bit disappointed because when this album came out originally, um, Miles and the rest of the guys played the same songs throughout all four sides of this album. And uh, one of the main criticisms that a lot of people uh, talked about, uh, besides myself, is that uh, uh, the tracks have been edited a lot. And in my eyes, when it happens a lot, it can be a bit tedious and repetitive to me. But don't get me wrong, there are some really good um, playing and, and some awesome musicianship uh, from not only Miles, but the rest of the guys. And uh, I really do love the electric period of Miles the most. But uh, this is, for me, my least favourite live album from Miles as of now. Uh, I do love Agharta, Pangea, excuse me, and Dark Megas. Dark Megas is a record that I need to buy as well on CD and on vinyl, but I love uh, Pangea and Agharta the most. But uh, yeah, this is this is an enjoyable album, but um, you know, it, it just have um, flaws that I've mentioned. So yeah, and the uh, last record. Now, this is a record that I've bought for the third time because the other two don't contain the inserts whatsoever. And the other two records are, uh, uh, I would say, I think, covered up with a lot of crackling or surface noise. Uh, but this is my third purchase of Pink Floyd's The Dark Side of the Moon. Now, I am not going to care less that uh, that I would try and buy an original anymore because what this, this uh, copy has for me is half of the inserts, like one of the stickers and one of the posters. And I was 
really happy to have one of the inserts. It didn't bother me that I uh, didn't have um, the two posters or two stickers. I just have one of both. So that, um, that made me pleased, finally. So here's this sticker. And this uh, incredible classic poster of the band. Let's see if I can get this out. Looks like this. Love this poster so much. But yeah, I am very happy to have a copy of Dark Side of the Moon with um, half the inserts. But when I was listening to this album, surface noise once again and a few jumps especially on um time and i think us and them which really bothered me so i think i'll have to buy the remaster not from 2016 though um uh, a uh, an earlier remaster of dark side of the moon because i do want to hear everything so clear and um, beautiful without these problems but uh, you know that's the way it is for um, some records there's no words needed to describe this album anymore because I think it's one of these most uh, over talked and over reviewed albums in my opinion Hence, it is still one of the greatest records of all time. So that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And I think the next video will be on um, Classic Albums Revisited, on Kraftwerk's Trans Europe Express, and The Man Machine will be turning uh, 40 years old later this week. So I'm excited for that. But uh, the next video will have to be posted, I will say, um, not this week, but next week, because I will be, um, I will be even more busy. So you know, sit tight, and I'll, uh, I'll do my best. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.